Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on the rocky soil, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched and withered for its lack of roots. Some seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on the rich soil and produced fruit a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears to hear ought to hear. The disciples approached him and asked, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has more, more will be given and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what little he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables. Because they look but do not see and hear but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them which says, Yes, indeed, you shall indeed hear but not understand. You shall indeed look but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it. And the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on the rocky soil is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy. But it has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among the thorns is the one who hears the word. But then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on the rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. The Gospel of the Lord. Three truths emerge from our readings today. God's word should be changing me. Heaven is worth it, and I have work to do. First reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Just as from the heavens the rain and the snow come down and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall be my word that goes forth from my mouth. So what is God saying through the prophet? The snow and the rain have a function. The snow and the rain physically change the soil to make it fertile. So the soil can produce nourishment. God draws an analogy between the rain, the snow, the soil, and his word. Just as the rain and the snow soften the soil and moisturizes the soil and feeds the soil, so God's word should be softening our hearts. So the word of God should be conditioning our hearts. So the word of God should be feeding our hearts. In short, the word of God should be changing us. Well, changing us into what? Changing us to be more virtuous. Changing us to be kinder, more patient, more charitable, more generous, more pure, more modest, more humble, more loving. The word of God should be challenging our consciences and convicting us to do better. The word of God should be making us feel guilty over our sins and making us desire to repent of them. But to do that, we have to be listening to the word. To do that, we have to be reading the word. To do that, we have to be meditating on the word of God. Oh, Father, I hate reading. Yeah, me too. Okay. How about listening to the Bible on CD when you're driving in your car? Or on your iPad when you're doing housework or yard work or at the gym? 
You know, modern technology has made the Bible and reflecting on the Bible very accessible. You can listen to relevant radio or watch EWTN. You can now download an app that has all the sermons of Bishop Sheen. We have a periodic Bible study that goes on right here in the parish. There are literally dozens of ways you can learn about and meditate on God's Word. Because if you don't expose yourself to the Word, it can't change you. Well, why should I want to change? Because heaven is worth it. That is what St. Paul is getting at in our second reading from his letter to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared to the glory to be revealed for us. Now, as I said, this is Paul's letter to the Romans, the last major letter he will write. Up to this time, Paul has been kicked out of one city after another. He's been beat up, he's been whipped, he's been beaten with clubs, he was stoned once and left for dead, he was shipwrecked, and now he's chained up in a Roman prison cell waiting to be executed. No one under this roof today can claim they have suffered more than St. Paul did. And yet, here he writes... I consider all these sufferings as nothing. Nothing. Why? Because he had his heart fixed on the reward that was waiting for him in heaven. My brothers and sisters, I assure you, the greatest joy we can experience on this earth is excrement compared to the smallest joy waiting for us in eternity. So don't do anything that will put that eternal joy in jeopardy. I've said before, it's an extremely helpful spiritual exercise to meditate on what heaven will be like every now and then. Imagine what it will be like being in perfect unity with God, with everybody you've ever loved, and multitudes of people you've never even met. All at the same time. It's the party that never ends, the peace that never subsides, the joy that never fails, the love that never dies. What else could you possibly want? There is a great book out called Imagine Heaven by John Burke. You can find it on Amazon. The book is a series of testimonies from people who have had near-death experiences and what their visions of heaven were. Trust me. If you read this book, you will want to go to heaven. Also helpful is reading the lives of the saints. When you see what the saints did and what they went through, it'll inspire your confidence and arouse your desire for heaven. That's what got St. Ignatius of Loyola. Ignatius of Loyola was a soldier who was convalescing of a wounded leg in a convent. Then he asked the sisters for books to read to pass the time. And all they had was a copy of St. Paul's epistles and a book of the lives of the saints. And Ignatius read these books again and again. And that inspired him to begin a religious order of his own. And thus began the Jesuits. Well, great father, how do I change? Jesus tells us in the gospel. The parable of the sower. Please note, all of the seed is good seed. There is nothing defective with God's word. The soil is a different story. The seed that falls on the footpath represents those that hear the word of God without understanding it, so the devil can easily pervert what they've heard and twist it to another agenda. This is what I spoke about in our first reading from Isaiah, about listening to the words of God and the authentic teaching on the word. Some seed falls on the rocky soil. These people accept the word but don't persevere. When times get tough, they bail. This is what I spoke to in our second reading from St. Paul. This is why we have to meditate on heaven and learn about the saints, because these things will inspire us to persevere during the dark times in our lives. And then the seed that falls among the weeds. These are the people who receive the word, but it bears no fruit because they're cluttered by materialism and worldly desires. What do we do if our soil has weeds? What do you do if your garden has weeds? You got to get the spade, the rake, and the hoe and dig them out. Spiritually speaking, the sacraments, especially the sacrament of the Eucharist and confession, those are the tools that will pull out the weeds. And this church is the tool shed. 
That's why we need to come to church every week and not just every now and then. This is where God provides the grace for you to combat the temptation to worldly desires. Because God's word should be changing us. Heaven is worth it. So we all have work to do. Let's get busy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.